The Agile Manifesto consists of four values, and essentially they're saying that while they value the things on the right, they prefer the things on the left. So while the things on the right are important, they're not as important as the things on the left. I've already talked about value number one in a different video, I now want to talk about value number two. Working software over comprehensive documentation. In other words, what they're saying is that working software is more important, should be preferred over comprehensive documentation. Now again, remember, it's not about the thing on the right, it's not about documentation being useless. It is useful, it's just not as important as working software. Of course, documentation is important. If you ever, as a programmer, used a third-party library that has, say, suboptimal, subpar documentation, you know the pain of trying to understand something that has incomprehensive documentation. So again, documentation is super important, but not as important as working software. And if you think about it, that's, <laughs> that of course makes a lot of sense. It's almost kind of silly. It doesn't matter if you have documentation if you don't have any software that actually implements the documentation. It doesn't matter if you've documented a perfect system unless you have that perfect system. But I like to think of this in two ways. So this is my best guess of what I think that they mean with this value. In one end, just as we were saying, the deliverable is not the documentation. The deliverable is the software, and therefore, software has to be more important. Working software has to be more important than documentation. That's one part of the story. But on another end, another part of the story is that using documentation as a means of requirements gathering is not always very successful. It's not always the best way of approaching this. So regarding the first point, I've sort of already elucidated it, but let me also give you one more point. It feels like forgetting that software is the end deliverable, forgetting that the deliverable is not documentation can easily lead us down the trail of perfecting and perfecting our documentation, but for no real benefit. We're, we're perfecting our documentation even though we don't have working software. In other words, what am I saying? I'm saying that diminishing returns, right? Like, so better documentation increases the value of the project or the software, but only to a certain extent. At some point, we sort of are creating documentation for documentation's sake. It's almost perhaps like escapism. I guess we could be super concerned about creating documentation because we're fleeing, <laughs> we're, we're, we're avoiding having to write more software, perhaps because that would be harder, more difficult. So instead of tackling that problem, we're just writing more documentation. So documentation is not la pular. It's not art for art's sake. We, we, we shouldn't have documentation for the sake of documentation. We should have documentation because it's valuable, because it provides value, either as a requirements gathering document or as documentation to end users or to other developers. It should provide value. It doesn't really have any sort of intrinsic value in and of itself. So that's the first point, right? Avoiding creating documentation for the sake of documentation. Avoiding the risk of getting too focused on writing documentation and forgetting that we actually have software to write. So spending too much time producing documents and too little time producing actually working software. So the second aspect that I mentioned. The second aspect is that it seems that using documentation, using documents as a means of requirements gathering, as a means of understanding what our clients want, is not necessarily always the best way of approaching it. Or even if we wouldn't say the best, let's say a cost-effective way of approaching it. Again, like as we were talking about before, you can definitely imagine a scenario where you spend too much time producing documentation. Too much as in that it's not cost-effective. So I'm trying to make sort of the same argument, but in terms of requirements gathering. So we get value, we derive value from documentation when we're using it to gather requirements, when we're using it to understand what the clients want. But think of the term diminishing returns. If for every unit of documentation we get one unit of uh, requirements, I mean I'm oversimplifying, but if that ratio is decreasing as we produce more documentation, then we have diminishing returns. We have a point where it doesn't really make any sense to, to create more documents because we're not getting a lot of value out from the clients. We're not getting a lot of payback in terms of requirements. And if you think about it, this makes a lot of sense, like intuitively. 
non-technical clients aren't necessarily able to read all of our technical documents. Of course, not because these people are stupid, but because A, we have different skill sets, and B, people have better things to do with their time than trying to decode documents. I have painful first-hand experience from this, showing people documents that I think are absolutely obvious and then expecting us to have a very valuable discussion, but then realizing that we're not even getting beyond the first page because we're not sort of successfully creating a shared understanding. And the way I understand the Agile Value working software over comprehensive documentation is that because of this problem, because of this asymmetry in, in knowledge, because of how people have different skill sets and because how people for very good reasons might not want to spend the time decoding our technical documents, decoding our specification documents, our documentation. Because of that, that's not necessarily always a successful way of gathering requirements from the clients. Instead, what we should do is that we should produce working software. Even if it's the wrong working software, we should produce working software, put it in front of the clients, and then use that as a means of gathering requirements. And you can, of course, see how this has been historically... I'm too young to have been part of this history, but from what I've gathered, it seems that a lot of the ideas about how to build software came from other engineering disciplines. So you would say, okay, how are we building bridges? Let's try to approach building software in the same way. And if you build a bridge, and then after the fact, after you've built the bridge, you realize that you want to change something. Well that's going to be rather expensive to do. But in software, that's not necessarily the case. That completely depends on your architecture. I mean, software is soft, right? It's not hardware. Changing software after the fact is possible and can be, I, I shouldn't say cheap, but, but let's say can be not expensive, right? It, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be super expensive. So because of that, the point is that instead of producing endless series of documents, pamphlets and pamphlets and pamphlets and books of documentation that we force clients to read through, instead we just try to produce working software, put that in front of the clients and then gather feedback from that. And I'll be the first to admit that this is easier said than done. It's painful to produce software that you know is probably going to be incorrect and is probably going to be refuted by the clients, which means that you're probably going to have to redo it. But in terms of cost efficiency, that's probably the cheapest way of doing it. That's probably the most efficient way of doing it. And while this point is totally unrelated, as a guy who likes code, I'd of course rather spend my time writing code than writing documentation. Just saying, it's gotta be worth something. So that's it. So that's the second value of the Agile values. Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss the next video about the third and the fourth value. Thanks for watching. Even worse, it's of course also possible that the clients don't actually know what they want, what software they want to have built. Or if you are developing your own software for your own company in-house or as a startup, that you don't know exactly what product you're building. Again, this is not because clients are stupid, it's because of very good reasons. It's because we don't actually know where we will create competitive advantage. And it's difficult to forecast that beforehand especially as the environment under us are changing. Think about the saying, in this day and age, you have to run to stand still. But for more information about that, I highly recommend you check out my other video on E-type, P-type and S-type systems, because what I'm saying holds for E-type systems. And most of the systems we come in contact with in daily life are E-type systems. But check out that other video for a more detailed explanation of why some systems are fundamentally subject to change.